Let's talk about the absolute value function. This is what the absolute value function looks like written down. And the graph looks like this. Looks kind of like a V shape. And for some motivation as to why it might look like that, let's pick some random x value. When x is negative 2, we can plug that into the function to get our y value. And we get the absolute value of negative 2, which is positive 2. So we have a point on this graph, negative 2, 2. That would be that one right there. We can continue on, plug in x equals negative 1 one into our function, that's going to give us a y value of the absolute value of negative 1, which is positive 1. That's going to be that point right there. If we plug in x equals 0, we get the absolute value of 0, which is 0, and we have the origin right there. If we plug in x equals 1, we get y equals 1, so the point 1, 1 is right there. And if we continue on, we can get the point 2, 2 as well. So there you go, you get kind of a v-shaped graph. And we can ask the question, where is our function equal to 3? Let's take a look at it algebraically really quickly. If we set our function value equal to 3, there's our function here. If we set that equal to 3, we get 3 is the absolute value of x. Now what x values could we plug in here to make this equation true? Well, most people would point out that x equals 3 is 1 right away. If you plug in x equals 3, you get the absolute value of 3 equals 3, and that's a true statement. But there's one more in this example. If we plugged in x equals negative 3, we would get the absolute value of negative 3 equals 3, and that's a true statement as well. So where is our function value equal to 3? Well, for two x values, 3 and negative 3. We can actually investigate that a little bit further on this graph of ours, because by asking the question, where is the function value equal to 3, we're asking where does our graph cross that line y equals 3. And what we found algebraically, and we could find graphically as well, is that our function crosses that line y equals 3 at two x values, negative 3 and positive 3. Those are the two answers that we got right there. Of course, then we can shift this basic function up and down and left and right, and we can stretch it and skew it. What if I want to know what the quantity x minus 1 absolute value minus 2 looks like? Well, this minus 2 shifts us down to this x minus 1 shifts us right 1. So we shift right 1 and down 2, and that's where we have our vertex of our v. And our graph is going to look something like this from there. And of course, we're always concerned with the y-intercept of a function. It gives us a little bit more information about what it looks like. Find that y-intercept, we plug in x equals 0. And our function then is f of 0, which is going to be 0 minus 1 absolute value minus 2. Negative 1 absolute value is going to be 1. And we're going to copy down the minus 2 here. And we get f of 0 equals negative 1. So our y-intercept should be the point 0, negative 1. Well, I got pretty close here on the graph. And how about x-intercepts? It looks like from our graph we have a couple of them. What we do is replace the function or the y-value with 0. Our function, I just copied it down, looks like that. So we're going to replace the function with 0. And we get this absolute value equation right here. Now we're going to talk more about how to solve this in class. But for this example, we'll just add 2 to both sides to get the absolute value value by itself, just the same way that we got the square root by itself in all of our previous videos. And this equation is actually going to split into two pieces the same way that we got two answers for this problem up here. Whatever our absolute value was set equal to, well, whatever's inside there could be both positive that value or negative that value. So I'm probably making a long story a little bit too short. We'll talk more about it in class. But what happens here is this thing inside the absolute value could be equal to positive 2 or negative 2. The absolute value splits the equation into two pieces. Now we have two easy equations to solve. We add one to both sides here to get x equals 3. We add one both sides here to get x equals negative 1. And what we're saying with this algebra is that our graph should have two x-intercepts, two zeros. One at x equals 3 and one at x equals negative 1. And if we look at our graph up here, kind of squeezing things in, it looks like my graph came pretty close to that as well. We have our zeros at x equals negative 1 and at x equals positive 3. And then we might also ask the question about this graph, where is our function, that function right there, equal to 2? What we would do to solve that is plug in our function value of 2. Again, get the absolute value all by itself. And this problem is going to split into two different pieces. Whatever's inside the absolute value could be 4 or it could be negative 4. Add 1 to both sides, add 1 to both sides, and we get that the function value is 2 when x is 5 or negative 3. So okay, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but I'm going to go back up to the graph, and we're going to look at this. Our function value is 2, that's right there, whenever x is negative 3 or 
5. Okay, so my graph isn't totally perfect, but that x value there is 5, and we'll say that this x value here is negative 3, and that is what we found with our purple work right down here. Okay, that's all I got for you. I will see you all in class.